Hey everybody, so uh, I'm pretty excited about this. I think this is super cool. Uh, but before we get into it, this isn't a tutorial. I can't show anything in Autodesk um, uh, Cloud uh, or any of the tools that I'm going to talk about here. Uh, just because some of that's proprietary and I don't feel comfortable uh, sharing that. It's just got client data in it. Um, but also, this kind of brings up one red flag with Autodesk that I'm sure a lot of folks are aware of. Their tools are really expensive, and it's just doesn't, um, it doesn't support a really uh, kind of, ex like a, if you wanted to explore, it doesn't support that kind of environment, unfortunately. So a lot of this exploration comes through uh, like your firm and what access level you have, which is super unfortunate because Autodesk tools can really bring a lot of value, especially their cloud tools. Um, I do wish they were more transparent and open, uh, but it is what it is. But that is just something I wanted to mention. Uh, depending on what you know your firm structure is and, and what you have, you may not have access to certain things. And then um, also I won't be able to share any specific tools. But I'm really excited and still wanted to talk about this um, just to start having a discussion around it because it's really... I think powerful. So ACC Bridge, if you haven't heard, is a way to integrate uh, two hubs together. And not not the hubs per se, but the projects in each of those hubs. So if you work with a architect, you could integrate your project. So you could set up a project. So instead of creating your Revit model in their project on, under their hub, you could create it under your hub and then link it to theirs. From their perspective, everything looks the same. They operate it, in, you know, they operate those uh, folders the same, they link it the same, everything looks the same. They don't even have to go to your hub. They see the data on their side. So, from a kind of barrier to entry or just like just the um, ease to access this, this workflow does not. Uh, cause any changes to the client. So it's an easy um, sell. And what's super cool is that it's even um, uh, beneficial to them because now they don't have to manage access. So if you're an architect and you're managing access for your partners, now you can give them access to just edit their uh, folder, which their folder is going to contain the model, and then only view access for the others. If you give them global rights like that, or not global, but if you just give them the typical rights, then they can share those folders into their own hub and then give their team members access to those uh, models and only information that's related to what their team needs to know as well. So they don't get access to all the clutter that comes with some of these hub or projects. So it is super cool because it um, it gives it makes it easier for the, the client. Usually, usually a lot of times it's the architect that has the hub and project. Now they don't have to manage all their partners. They, I can just add a user real quick. They can jump in, take care of some stuff, on, you know, in the MEP model, and then get out or whatever. And this is really important for 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 MEP folks that are working in these hubs. This gives you control over your own IP. So I guess before I continue to go, I'm just super excited about this. I tried to put together this list. I threw it in ChatGPT to refine it and shorten it up a little bit, but these are six points that if you're not using this, you should, and you should talk to somebody if you're using ACC uh, and you're not leveraging this, <clears throat> you're not. that means you're not controlling your IP, your data sitting in somebody else's hub. Uh, it, you can lose access to that data. This is a big point. You cannot scale, you cannot create scalable solutions. That is a big issue that I had uh, when, I work, when I started working for an MEP firm. Uh, I could not create a solution in Autodesk platforms that could scale across all of our projects because we were working in other people's hubs and they would have to uh, give permissions to those and it was just kind of unreliable. So now you have that ability. So these six points here, uh, management, the uh, kind of manage your own environment. So you can set up templates, you can automatically add people, you could create Autodesk platform integrations, 
Um, you retain control over your data, very important. Uh, streamline collaboration. So like I mentioned, this makes it very easy for the architect because from their perspective, everything looks the same, but now they don't have to manage access for a bunch of uh, uh, designers that aren't even on their uh, team, their you know their partners they don't have to manage all that they can lead that for you know to the team that's actually uh you know needing access so like a, a bin manager in in the partner firm can add not even the bin manager pm whatever can add it just depends on what they want but now you as a like design partner or whatever you know a subcontractor you have that ability now you're not just like whatever the client has is is kind of what you have to do so that I think is really important and because it makes it easy for them, they don't have to. That was a big thing because this is something we're, we're already doing with clients. They were super, um, they like that. They love the, the, the fact they didn't have to manage the access for everybody. I mean, it isn't like they hate, like, they don't want to play nice. It's it's more like it's just a tedious effort to do. And now we could automate it on our end so that even we don't have to manage it. So. Um, easy integration. Some of this is redundant, but it's just like you have you can um, integrate within their hub uh, seamlessly. But then also you can maintain like consistency within your environment. So you can use templates. You can use uh, you know certain tools, and you can consistently add team members correctly with the right permissions. You can leverage other services in there, so you get you have a lot more flexibility and just uh, um, keeping consistent. And like I mentioned before the um not having the ability to um kind of control the environment means that each hub each project you're invited to could be totally different now you have much more control over that i mean to an extent you can literally like bridge a folder over and then that folder you could rename that folder does not impact the client hub you could rename it to something that's more clear and then you could only have five folders out of the 20 folders that might be in the client hub. And those five folders are the only ones that your team sees. So super uh, convenient and just easy. Uh, ownership of IP, that's very important. You own your data now. You can uh, set up your own automations to archive it. You can do really cool things with querying your models super fast. I mean, really, at this point with this integration, it's like, Whatever you want to do, it's now possible. You know, you're not limited by what somebody else is going to give you um, approval to do. And that, like, approval process when it comes to other people's hub, it hubs is necessary because it's like you don't want people to just create add-ins that don't work at your firm and then create, like, that they, they then, you know, mess up hundreds of projects. So it makes sense from that uh, perspective. So nothing wrong with that, but now... This integration allows you to create solutions for your own data, you know, things that you can automate within uh, in-house uh, that you don't need approval for because it's not impacting um, their uh, data. Uh, so I kind of mentioned this throughout this whole this conversation, but uh, scalable custom solutions. Like, you, like I've said, you could build, you know, your own applications uh, using uh, Autodesk uh, platforms. Uh, use all those different services and create your own solutions that are scalable. They're not. Um, they're not just gonna kind of be used only on the projects that are approved. They can be used on every single project you have bridge on. And then uh, reduced administrative overhead. So the fact that now you can manage this stuff in house, you can build even automations for the project setup that automatically add the proper team. So some companies have like internal intranets that kind of manage like team members for certain projects. If you connect that into Autodesk platforms, then you can automatically add the proper team members to say your ACC project and kind of uh, integrate all that together. Whereas before uh, you could create those integrations, but you just again had to get, approval for what add-ins could be approved or could be used in a client's uh, project. So those are, I think, six points are just roughly threw these together, but you could use this as a conversation to start with uh, your own firm if you're not already using this tool. Or if you've got partners, uh, talk to them about this because this could really help them out and you. 
Um, if you're the prime and you're the hub owner, you know, this could really uh, help out your workflows as well. You still have access to all the data. So you could still download their models. You could still collect all of that if you wanted to. Uh, but so from your perspective as a hub owner, nothing has changed. So I think that's uh, super cool. Um, this is kind of the website if you wanted to go check out, read some more. This isn't like super... Um, detailed, but there's some really good information uh, out on YouTube about just using Bridge. A really good presentation I saw was from Imagine It Clarity, or sorry, Imagine It Clarity is a tool they have, but Imagine It's the company. They did a presentation about this, um, and if I can find that, I will put it in the description below. So definitely check that out. But Anyways, this is all I've got. I'd love to hear if you're using this already, how you're using it, what's the what's it been like, uh, and anything else. Feel free to share uh, below. And if you like it, like the video, feel free to comment, or feel free to subscribe, like it, and so on. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.